Hello again. Up until digital photography came along and virtually replaced traditional film photography, not so long ago, transparency film was the choice of pro photographers for virtually every application. The reason for this was the ability of transparency film to render rich, accurate color with crisp details, plus faithful reproductions for magazine and catalog work. Another characteristic of transparency film, also known as reversal film, was its ability to render a positive image versus a negative image as in the case of regular negative film. In other words, with transparency film, what you see is what you get. Transparency film is still available in many sizes, from 35mm to 8x10. Many photo hobbyists shot slide film on vacations so they could have it processed and mounted in 2x2 inch slides. This enabled them to project the slides using a slide projector to share their images with their friends. In fact, that's where the term slideshow comes from that's still used today for digital images. One other interesting historical fact is that virtually all motion pictures we used to see at the cinema were shot using 35mm transparency film until recently when digital imaging took its place. You can think of a 35mm slide as a frame still from a film clip to put this into perspective. The purpose of this lesson is to show you how to use transparency film to make 35mm slides and how to process the film yourself at home. Why, you may ask, am I doing this, since film photography is so outdated? Well, there's several reasons, actually. One is to enable you to create your own slides for use in a slide printer to make image transfers and emulsion lists, as seen in Lesson 52. Another reason for you lomographers out there who love shooting film and want to use transparency film in place of negative film and have to rely on a lab to make your prints. Yet another reason is to have the ability to convert virtually any print you already have into a crisply rendered 35mm slide. And finally, I'm doing this lesson because it's so fun and gratifying to be able to shoot and process your very own images yourself. You will have 100% artistic freedom by learning this process and even take it further to create your own lifts or transfers or any other use you can think of for transparency film. All you need to get started to make your copy slides is a roll of 35mm slide film, still available at any film store or online. I prefer Fuji Chrome Sensia because of its beautiful colors and crisp results. You'll also need a 35mm SLR camera with a macro lens and an ADB filter for color balance from the incandescent lights. Back in the days when film reigned supreme and you didn't have a white balance setting or Adobe Photoshop to correct color, you had to use a color compensating filter that attached over your lens, the type or number of the filter depending on the light source for your scene. Because nearly any kind of incandescent light adds an overall yellow cast to an indoor scene, a cooling filter such as the ADB is placed over the lens to absorb the yellow cast and thereby make the colors more accurate. In fact, you can still find an array of cooling and warming filters in Photoshop that mimic the effect of these filters. I'm using ISO 200 film and have set my Nikon accordingly. I'm going to shoot on aperture priority at f8 to ensure crisp detail. If you have only manual exposure, set your aperture to f8 and meter for the correct shutter speed and set it accordingly. I'm using a couple of photo floods evenly spaced at the same distance on either side of the print I'm copying to provide even shadowless lighting. You can use a pair of ordinary flood lights and clamp on reflectors if you don't have studio lights. If you don't have access to a copy stand, you can still photograph prints by mounting them on something flat and shooting them normally as opposed to shooting from above. Here I'm using a flat metal sheet designed for copy work, but you could improvise by using foam corn tape or push pins instead. Once I get the print perpendicular to the floor, I use magnetic strips to hold it firmly to the plate so it won't curl. This is a standard 4x6 print, but you could even make a copy of a wallet print, as long as your macro lens can get in that close. Once the photo is mounted and the lights are in place, I attach the camera to a tripod and compose the image. I want to fill the frame with the entire print and crop out the strips. This can be done by moving the camera closer or farther from the print and focusing until the image is crisp in the viewfinder. Be sure to look for any reflections you may see in the print and eliminate them by referring to Lesson 59. Once you're all set up and the image is composed properly, shooting is as easy as pressing the shutter release button. Since I have 36 frames on my roll of slide film, I always shoot a whole bunch of copy slides at once while I'm all set up. After you're done shooting, it's time to process the film. All you need to do this is a standard 35mm film tank, a light tight room or film tent, 
and an E6 processing kit you can purchase online. The processing kit we're using here is this one, the Quartz Size Arista E6 Rapid Developing Kit, purchased at freestylephoto.biz. You need to prepare the chemicals beforehand by following the instructions and storing them in separate quart containers. To show you how to process the film, I've asked one of my advanced photo students, Sheridan, to do the honors. The first step is to remove the slide film from the camera and load it into the developing tank. If this is your first time for developing film, you can learn how to load the film in Lesson 41. Sheridan's using a Patterson triple tank because we need a large tank in order to use a rotary tube processor. You could use a single tank and agitate the film by hand, but it'll be a lot of work. Rotary tube agitators like the one used here are pretty inexpensive and will save you a lot of work. If you don't have a film tent, a totally dark room will suffice for loading the film tank. Once the film is in a light tight tank, it's time to process it. Before developing, you'll need to heat up the chemicals to one of the target temperatures found in the instructions. We chose 85 degrees. This is done by placing the quart bottles in a tub of water at the proper temperature and letting them set until they reach the same temperature. While this is happening, you can pre-wash the film with water for 60 seconds. Pour the pre-wash water into the light safe developing tank, put on the lid, and then place the tank on the rotary processor. Turn on the processor and set the timer for 60 seconds. Next, Sheridan is dumping out the pre-wash water and then pouring in the first developer. You need to allow this to agitate for 16 and a half minutes. After that, pour the first developer back into its original container. All of the chemicals can be reused until they're finally exhausted. Now rinse the film by filling the tank seven times with fresh water. Next, you repeat the steps for the remaining two chemicals the color developer, and the Blix. At 85 degrees, the time for the color developer is 6 minutes with agitation, followed by the same rinse process. Then, the time for the Blix is 8.5 minutes with agitation. After you've dumped out the Blix, it's safe to remove the lid from the tank. The final rinse is for 5 minutes in running water. After the rinse, you remove the reel from the tank and remove the film from the reel. Now Sheridan's going to show us how the film looks. As you can see, it looks absolutely awesome. Now the film needs to be hung up to dry. Once the film strip is dry, cut the film by frames and mount in 2x2 two two slide mounts. When mounting the slides, it's a good idea to wear cotton gloves to avoid fingerprints. Slide mounts are still easy to find and fairly inexpensive. You can also recycle old slide mounts by removing the old film and replacing it with the new stuff. Once they're mounted, your slides will be ready to use in whatever way you see fit. Well, that's about it for this lesson. I hope you learned something new in this lesson, and I encourage you to give this old school process a try sometime. You won't regret it. Until next time, goodbye.